Hey everybody, back for part two of Raymond Carver's Cathedral. But uh, big news, um, my mask just came in the mail, so I am ready to, when I have to, go out into the world to the post office or shopping. I'm all set and ready to do my part, as we are all doing, to keep everybody safe. And remember, that's why we're doing this distance learning thing. It's not by anyone's preference. It is by, uh, it's important to do because we're doing our part to keep away from each other, to keep everyone safe and from transmitting the disease. So I know when I'm like, oh, do I have to really make another video? I just want to go to class. I say, you know what? I am doing this um, to keep everyone safe, including, including you guys. So um, I think I like it. All right, so the climactic scene of, of Cathedral uh robert has been trying to charm bub and uh bub's not a real easy guy to charm although he's not the the hardest and sometimes people ask why robert you know chooses to smoke marijuana he's probably 40 some years old for the first time in his life and i think it's a matter of um hey i'll try something of yours and then maybe you'll try something that I want to do. Uh, and think about that. Uh, think about this, people. If you want someone to say, listen to music that you like, what's a better way to do it? Hey, your music stinks. Listen to mine. Or, hey, what are you listening to? Can I listen to that? Ooh, that's good stuff. Hey, you want to try something I'll listen to? Yeah, sure. So Robert's a very uh, charming, in the best sense of the word, kind of guy. So. They're watching TV, which is kind of interesting, and uh, they're just kind of going with it, um, and they're trying. This is a, this is two guys. Uh, maybe for the women out there, you're like, man, this is awkward, but I will say it's, it's two guys doing what guys do, not necessarily bearing their feelings, wearing their hearts on their sleeve. And uh, Raymond Carver, I think he chose, you know, he could have chosen anything for this story. He could have chosen elephants or giraffes. There's all kinds of stuff. The Empire State Building that they could have drawn and Robert could have asked about. But he picked cathedrals. And I think there are a couple reasons for this. Uh, number one, the architecture of a cathedral. Hey, maybe I'll try to put a picture in there of a cathedral right here. Um, the architecture of a cathedral is designed to open your heart to God. When you walk in the front door of a cathedral, you quickly realize when you get inside, it was in fact really the back door, and your mind, your eyes go straight up to the front of the building, and then up to a rose window, which is open to God. And most cathedrals were built uh, for the priest, Catholic cathedrals, to actually have his back to you, and he was your conduit to God. And the Gothic arches, which is what this cathedral is, all point toward heaven. So when you walk into a cathedral and you don't even have to think about it, just immediately you feel open. And the story is about opening up um, Bub. And the other, I think, important element of cathedrals for this story is, and this is very true, one of the other important elements here is the men who began their life's work on them, they never lived to see the completion of their work. In that wise, Bob, they're no different than the rest of us. So that is very true. Sometimes cathedrals took centuries to build. And if you were working on the foundation of a cathedral, you knew you were going to be long dead uh, before you ever saw the cathedral uh, completed. So it's very, these very sort of pearls of wisdom that Robert drops out here are very important. Um, like, you know, that's the rest of us. We never know the effect we have on other people. Um, we will be dead and what we have contributed, good or bad, to the world will continue. Um, and just as a, as a side note here, just so it's more like really being in class, I'll talk about semi-relevant or irrelevant things. Um, there's a great anecdote that I encourage you to um, think about and tell others. One day a man was walking along a thousand years ago and a cathedral was being built. And there were three other men putting up the stones. And the man walking along said to the first uh, stone lifter, what are you doing? And he said, laying up stone. To the second man, he said, what are you doing? The second man said, I'm building a cathedral. 
And he said to the third man, what are you doing? And the third man said, I'm glorifying God. So the three guys are doing exactly the same thing. Completely different perspectives. Which one do you think has the highest level of job satisfaction? I agree. The third. The second one's pretty good too because he actually can see that this is all leading up to a building. But the first one, all he's thinking about is minute by minute lifting up the stone after stone after stone. And uh, every job has, you can see it different ways. What do I do? Uh, I fix comma splices. Well, that's not going to lead me to have a lot of job satisfaction. Um, help people through their college experience. That's pretty good. Open up people's minds, enlarge their minds and hearts through literature. Ooh, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, but anyway, back to the story. So we're talking about cathedrals, and then Robert has this, this great idea of, hey, let's draw one together. And uh, Bub is like, yeah, why not? We'll go for it. You know, hey, who can resist Robert? So they get out a, a, a brown uh, paper bag and a, and a magic marker, and they actually, they hold hands. They're touching. You get the feeling Bub's not a big toucher, but these two guys are literally uh, connected and, and they're drawing a cathedral because a blind man would have no idea really what a cathedral looks like. And so Bub starts and then he puts in flying buttresses and he puts in arches and they're, and they're just, they're going at it. It's, un, it's unbelievable. And I just love the energy that comes through in this last scene. I love the way that this is that this is written. And I'll, I'll read it for you. All right, he said, all right, let's do her. He found my hand, the hand with the pen. He closed his hand over my hand. Go ahead, bub, draw, he said, draw, you'll see. I'll follow along with you, it'll be okay. Just begin now, like I'm telling you. You'll see, draw, the blind man said. So I began. First, I drew a box that looked like a house. It could have been the house I lived in. And then I put a roof on it. At either end of the roof, I drew spires. Crazy. Swell, he said, terrific. You're doing fine, he said. Never thought anything like this could happen to you in your lifetime, did you, bub? Well, it's a strange life. We all know that. Go on, keep it up. I put in windows with arches. I drew flying buttresses. I hung great doors. I couldn't stop. The TV station went off the air. That used to happen. TV actually stopped around 1 o'clock and it went all fuzzy. The TV station went off the air. I put down the pen and closed and opened my fingers. The blind man felt around over the paper. He moved the tips of his fingers over the paper all over what I had drawn. And he nodded. Doing fine, the blind man said. I took up the pen again and he found my hand. I kept at it. I'm no artist, but I kept drawing just the same. My wife opened her eyes and gazed at us. She sat up on the sofa, her robe hanging open. She said, what are you doing? Tell me, I want to know. I didn't answer. The blind man said, we're drawing a cathedral. Me and him are working on it. Press hard, he said. That's right, that's good. He said, sure, you got it, Bob, I can tell. You didn't think you could, but you can, can't you? You're cooking with gas now. You know what I'm saying? We're really gonna have us something here in a minute. How's the old army? He said, put some people in there now. What's a cathedral without people? My wife said, what's going on? Robert, what are you doing? What's going on? It's all right, he said to her. Close your eyes now. The blind man said to me, I did it. I closed them just like I said. Are they closed? He said, don't fudge. They're closed, I said. Keep them that way, he said. He said, don't stop now, draw. So we kept on with it. His fingers rode my fingers over my hand. We went over the paper. It was like nothing else in my life up to now. How often in your life do you think or say, it was like nothing else in my life up to now? Not too often, though I've been saying it more often. Then he said, I think that's it, I think you got it. He said, take a look, what do you think? But I had my eyes closed. I thought I'd keep them that way for a little longer. I thought it was something I ought to do. Well, he said, are you looking? My eyes were still closed. I was in my house, I knew that but I didn't feel like I was inside anything. It's really something, I said. Talk about a great last scene. And there's nothing crazy over the top here. Two guys um, talking, connecting. It's a marvelous, happy ending. And 
I think we have to focus on this one phrase, but I didn't feel like I was inside anything. What a poetic way to describe a feeling. Um, yeah, he's inside his house, he's inside his clothes, his skin, um, but he doesn't feel like he's inside anything. How often do you, can you say, I don't feel like I'm inside, I feel free, right? Not confined. Um, you know, it's hard. If I've got papers to write. I have, pa I have papers to grade. You have papers to write. Reading, discussion boards, um, work, right? Uh, dishes to do, cooking, hunting down toilet paper. Um, we have our lives, right? But there's no reason to feel like you're inside of anything. And this is freeing to Bub. He's, he's outside himself. Right? He's, he's connected with Robert, he's closed his eyes, and this has opened him up. Now this is nothing new, believe me. Uh, literature was being written 3,000 years ago, uh, where a blind person was a seer, a blind person was the wise person in a community. So, the idea of the, of the wise blind man, the blind man who sees more than the man with, vi with, with sight, is nothing new. Raymond Carver didn't invent this, but he puts a nice 20th century um, spin on it. So, you know, what, what life lessons can we take from this story? Because I think there, there are some good ones here. Bub's not a bad guy. Uh, you probably know people like Bub. They're kind of grumpy, don't really like to talk to people, but once you do talk to them, they're not that bad. But you don't really want to wake up one day and be bub. Um, but what if you do? What if someday you're moving and you move your sofa and you find your art of the short story under the sofa and you're like, oh yeah, hey, I remember that class. That was pretty crazy. That's back when COVID was a thing. But um, you kind of sit down and you start reading and you open to this page and you're like, oh man, I've become bub. I really don't like my job, I'm kind of grumpy a lot, I don't feel connected to my spouse. Um, well, connect with people, you know, this is one of our recurring themes this semester. Um, and how you do it, well, you know, there are lots of ways to do it. There are community organizations, uh, calling old friends, visiting people. People don't visit like they used to. People used to spend their Sundays visiting others. Just stopping by, talking. I used to do it with my dad. Um, you know, sometimes for some of us, myself included, it's more of an effort. Sometimes I'd rather just sit alone, read a book, um, ride my bike by myself. But it is important to remain connected with others. And maybe we're realizing that more now than ever because it's a little harder to connect with people. Maybe it's easier in some ways, um, but it's important. You don't want to wind up like Bub. You might want, you know, don't, don't wake up like Bub. You might have Bub-like days. Be Robert, be Robert, be open to all people, be a good influence on others.